I'm Megan McCarthy from Sign Africa, and I'll be interviewing Orlando Devru from Amrod and Rob Mackinson from Midcom. Amrod recently invested in two HP S1000s as well as a Zoom G3 XL3200 cutter from Midcom. Welcome, Rob and Orlando. Morning. Morning. Um, so, Orlando, can you give a short update on Tully Digital's mer merger with Amrod, which was announced in May, and how this has benefited both entities as well as the market? Well, Amrod uh, started speaking to us last year, and they have now purchased over our manufacturing. And so, yeah, we've, uh, my team and myself have now joined Amrod, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's completely absorbed into Amrod now, it's a full Amrod uh, division. And how that benefited Amrod is it's allowed us now, I say allowed us, me as Amrod, allowed us now to uh, move into the display market, which was an offering that we were were lacking in the past and uh, we're bringing that to market. How is that going to benefit the market? I think it's, uh, we're highly polished and uh, we try to be as efficient as possible with this offering to market and I think this is going to be of great benefit to our client base and to the market in general. Great. Um, and then going to the, the machines, why did Amron choose the two HP S1000s? Well, we looked at a multitude of uh, solutions and uh, we felt that the H1, the, the S1000s were one of the few machines that were exceptionally well at doing both the direct and paper transfer method uh, with zero compromise. And you know, they're good stable machines. We've got a long standing uh, history with using, or myself, uh, with using HP latex technology. So I knew the technology quite well and, and how it worked. Uh, and we had a good look at the HP S1000s. They work really well. They're pretty stable machines. They, you know, they, they keep color consistency, which is always very important, especially in sublimation. And that's what made us go with the S1000s. Great. And then regarding the Zunt cutter purchase, um, you didn't choose the least expensive cutter. Why were you happy to pay a premium price for the Zunt? So my first Zunt I bought about seven years ago, I think, uh, people take. And uh, at, even at the time back then when we bought it, I think it was the most expensive machine I had in the stable at the time. So uh, even then it was quite a bit of pull to swallow to buy. But I think once you, you purchase a cutter and you start seeing the real life benefits and the efficiencies that it gives you and the consistency and the tracking, there's so much more to, to just buying a cutter than getting a cutter. There's a lot of uh, additional reporting that you're able to see and I knew the Zoom machine extremely well and understood it's, uh, there's no perfect machine in this world, unfortunately. They all have, uh, you know, some machines are very good at doing certain things and not others. The Zoom was probably one of the best balanced machines for what we needed it. Uh, extremely good at jobbing, you know, interchanging in the market that we, we're currently in. And I think in general, versatility is key. And the Zoom was exceptionally good at pulling this off. And because we all obviously had, a, a, again, a long-standing relationship with Zoom and with Midcom, I was very comfortable going into another Zoom. I understood the technology for us to plug more guys in and to get them up to, this, to the level of understanding how to operate the machine. The learning curve is a lot shorter. Uh, and that's what made us go with the Zoom again. It, it, is, it is not a, a cheap machine, granted, but... I think when you look at the yield over time and you understand what those benefits are, you, you understand why, um, why you pay what you do. Uh, Rob doesn't have the right now to increase the price, just by the way, Rob. <laughs> just kidding. No, it's, it's, um, it, it, was, it was a sound purchase. Also, it's, you know, it's great having two machines of the same tech and they're interchangeable. So we've now got two GPs. We can interchange tools. If one machine's capacity is running over, we can take a tool and split the load onto another machine. So that it just made a lot more sense to stay with the same brand uh, and go forward with it. Great. And then have you been using the printers and cuts and mainly for PPE production during this time or have these opened up any new markets or other opportunities for the business? No, not really. We, we haven't uh, been doing a lot of PPE type stuff. Uh, we've been focusing with a new division coming on for Amrod with the, us going into the display market. There was a lot of preparation work with uh, getting all the back end ready and 
what we've done is we've taken our current product offerings, streamlined how we go about producing it, the cut files, the the whole integration and the flow. That's what we've really been focusing on with the machines. And th that's why I've bought what we bought because we uh, I understand the downstream and, and I wanted to integrate all of that as seamless as possible. So that's what we've really been focusing on, not so much the PPE side, to be honest. Okay. And then you entered into a paper use system on the, the printers. Was this a deciding factor in favor of your purchasing decision? You know, it's, it's always nice to have a, a PPU uh, model if it gives you peace of mind, right? So you have a fixed cost, you know what you're in for, and being, even though we are experienced latex users, being a new machine, I think the PPU just made more sense for us to get our uh, hands around how it all works and if there's any niggles in how we operate with it. But it's, it's, it's just peace of mind. You've got a fixed cost, you know what you're in for, the machine, because it's PPU and you're getting head replacements and you uh, know what your cost is per square, you know that the machine's delta values and that values are always going to be with spec. You know that it's a fixed variable moving forward. It just made more sense to, to go with PPU for now. Great. And then how, is it, how important is the strength of a local partner like Midcom support capabilities? And did this influence your decision in purchasing the machines from Midcom? I think in any business, people negate the fact that that's a supplier is just that, your partner. And it's incredibly important to make sure you choose the right partner. It's like getting married uh, in a way, I guess you, you've got to make sure that there's, <laughs> there is um, a beneficial relationship. And yes, it was definitely a factor. We, we needed somebody to partner with us. We have got a big, um, We've got big plans on the horizon to move forward, and it was important for us to choose somebody that we could uh, know that was stable, that was be able to give us the right service, uh, have the right backing, and we felt that uh, Midcomp and HP uh, definitely fit with those, uh, ticked those two boxes. So you did touch a bit on service, and how have you found the service from Midcom? Yeah, it's been stable. It's been good. Uh, you know, we have from time, it's manufacturing is manufacturing. You have issues from time to time, machine breakdowns, uh, being new technology, sometimes you can have an, a situation where the operator doesn't understand. So yeah, Midcom's been good in that respect. Uh, you know, once we give the call, they come out, they sort it out. And so far, so good. But we are we are officially launching tomorrow. So I think things are gonna get a lot, uh, lot more interesting as we go. Great. And then, um, Rob, I'll go over to you. Uh, why is the HP S1000 and Zoom Cutter a good combination, and how do they complement each other? Well, I, I, I think any printer and cutter, it's an interesting marriage because you, on the one hand, you need reliability on the printer, you need color consistency, there's a whole lot of technical speak and jargon around the printer that doesn't really apply when it comes to cutting. So. They're a good combination because they're both high quality machines, but outside of that, each machine on its own has its, has its merits. Orlando pointed out that one of the big features of the S1000 is that it prints onto paper and direct to textile equally happily. It doesn't really mind which one. Um, you know, uh, speeds and uh, productivity is a little bit different depending on your application, but the fact that you have that flexibility is a big plus. The Zunt has always been strong in productivity. So, uh, you know, they always think outside of the box. If you, if you can excuse the pun, they, um, uh, you know, they have tools uh, to improve productivity. Orlando visited the factory in, in Switzerland before the decision was made, and he, and he saw just how forward-thinking they are. Simple things like uh, the option on Orlando's second cutter now is called the overcutter camera. It takes a snapshot of, of what's on the table and, and starts cutting within a few seconds as opposed to waiting almost up to a minute to register. So it's those sort of small details that make a big difference when, when you're trying to get productivity out of the machine. Um, you know, everybody, everybody's always under pressure. Uh, the pressure always comes when you least expect it. So it's dependable and it has a lot of productivity benefits. Um, so together they make a good combination because individually they, they stand out as, as two really good technologies. Okay. So extremely, just to, to back Rob up, yeah, I mean, the extremely solid, 
if you ever buy a Zunt and you just see how it comes in the crates, you appreciate the amount of thought that goes into this machine. I, I love engineering. I'm an extremely technical, details-driven person. Much to Rob's dismay, I can drive him nuts sometimes <laughs> with the amount of detail that I want to know. But um, yeah, going to even going to the factory, it's just the way they package the box, the four the boxes, the, the foresight into the tool placements and how it gets put together and uh, consistently from cut one to cut one thousand. It's really an extremely well thought out machine. And um, then Rob, the printers and cuts that were installed in stages starting the month after lockdown. The restrictions during this time must have posed quite a few challenges. What were these challenges and how did Mincomp overcome these? There were a lot of dynamics at, at play because there were two issues. One was, of course, the lockdown. There were restrictions in, in shipment. The, the first S1000 went in quite quickly because it was our demo unit and it was in the country already. It was a bit of a challenge getting um, rigging companies to operate during those sort of closing stages of the, of the full lockdown. So that was a, a bit of a challenge. And then in terms of the additional equipment that still had to come in, um, you know, freight into South Africa was severely challenged, both sea freight and, and air freight. So there's always going to be a timing issue. But I think for Orlando, it, it made a lot of sense to, to stagger it anyway. It would have been a, a little bit much for everything to arrive at, at once. So it actually planned out quite well. And Orlando, you know, for the, for the moment is a little bit challenged in terms of space. So we needed to, you know, accommodate whatever we could to, to make use of the space. It's not a perfect environment. And I'm sure Orlando is looking forward to much bigger premises in the, in the time to come. But um, it worked well. As I said, it was a timing issue that, that could be considered as a, as a problem, but actually turned out in our favor. I think it worked well to, to stagger the installation the way that it, that it was done. Okay, great. And then please could you comment on your history with um, Orlando and Amrod? Orlando's hit the nail on the head already. He's a very, 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 very technical person. And I personally like that. I'm technical. I like to get down into the nitty gritties and the nuts and bolts. You know, we don't like to skim over the top and, and we love a challenge. So, um, you know, when it comes down to the absolute finer details in terms of productivity and technology and, and, and different options, I, I really enjoy my time with Orlando. It's an, always an engaging discussion. Um, a few disagreements occasionally, and that's fine. But um, of course, with, with Tully, uh, you know, faithful customer, uh, invested in, in latex technology in its, uh, in its early days, uh, hopefully paid off for him. But uh, Orlando always makes decisions that are right for the business. That's, that's key. And, and if it's sometimes not in our favor, I'm perfectly okay with that, and I respect that. So um, the homework that was done um, for this acquisition was amazing. You know, Orlando spent, uh, did a whirlwind trip overseas with, uh, with Nimrod, um, saw the factories, saw the people, spoke to the players, asked all the questions. My feedback from both Zund and HP that Orlando visited was, wow, he certainly asks the interesting questions. And I, as I said, I, I think as a company, we enjoy that. We enjoy that kind of relationship with, uh, with the customer. Great. And then um, what are the benefits of your pay per use program of and what has been the feedback from customers? You know, that's an interesting discussion. So, you know, we've got a lot of press out there on pay per use and as it applies to a lot of customers, it's, it's a bit of a no brainer. Uh, with Orlando being um, a, a challenging individual as he is, it, it, there was an awful lot of debate around this topic because you know, the perception is, I think, with a pay-per-use program, and it's an incorrect perception, is that we're doing it to make more money. It's absolutely not the case at all. In fact, in some of our cases with pay-per-use, we're making less money than we did before out of, you know, with a particular customer. If you compare the purchase of ink, the purchase of print heads, spare parts, labor, consumables, compared to what we, what we bill on pay-per-use. So to me, it was never about uh, maximizing profitability. It was about allowing customers to focus on what they should be focusing on, and that's concentrating on sales and getting work through their, through their factories and not getting pulled down on 
on fighting with suppliers over the cost of spare parts and, and, the, and the cost of labor and why are you charging two hours travel when, when I'm only 20 minutes away from your office and you try and explain because the guy was at the other end of town at the time. And, you know, we engaged in so many of those types of discussions with customers. And to me, the biggest benefit of paper use for Midcomp is all of that emotion and all of that discussion is gone. For the customers who've adopted that program, we don't have that discussion anymore. And, and to me, that's refreshing. And we don't make any more money out of the program. It's really there to allow, as I said, customers to focus on print. That's their job. Focus on getting work for your printers, make your printers busy or cutters in the case of a cutter, but paper use obviously applies to printers. So I think with, and, and what's important to mention, and Orlando is aware of this, and I think it was a condition of going on the program is, if it doesn't work out, if there's this real suspicion or proven um, um, fact that that it's not the most cost-effective system, you opt out. You know, there's we, there's no there's a contract in place, but it's a contract that can be terminated. So people can come off the program and go back on the program quite easily. You know, if it doesn't work for them one way, they can choose the other option. So I think between Orlando and uh, and Nimrod, uh, certainly with a new technology in, in, you know, in the world, let alone in, in South Africa, it's a safe option. You know, there's no surprises now. He, he knows exactly what his costs is, are, are per square meter. He can cost his jobs to his customers with the, with the knowledge that, that he's not going to accidentally underquote on a, on a job. Um, so I think those are the main, the main benefits. And as I said, it's a flexible program. So, you know, a couple of months into it, maybe you want to ask the question again of Orlando, maybe, Maybe it has worked for him, maybe it hasn't, but I think it's a very aggressive program and I think it works for most, for most people. We've, okay. we've adopted a lot of customers onto the program. Out of the 70 customers, I think now that we have on the, on the system, I think two have, have pulled out of the program for, for whatever reason. So by and large, it's a, it's a good working, working system. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, unless there's any closing comments from either Orlando, I'll start with you. Have you got anything else to add? No, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, no. okay great. I, yeah, I, I certainly look forward to the next couple of months uh, in, this, in this venture with, with Amrod. Um, as I said, the, on the cutter side, we're very confident there's not going to be any buyer's remorse or, or, or regrets. Uh, you know, it's a very, very solid machine and technology. Um, the HP uh, Stitch was long in development by, by HP. I think they've come up with a, good, with a good formula. It's very cost competitive, both machine and, and running cost. Um, and in, on the smaller stitches, we've got a couple of customers who've had unbelievable success during the lockdown period with the 1.6 meter version of the printer. So it's a good technology. It's worked, it's proven itself. S1000, obviously a slightly more complex animal being, being a 3.2 meter, um, but I think it'll work well. And as I said, I really look forward to this journey with, uh, with Amrod. I think it's going to be uh, interesting for both of us. Uh, it's less of a culture shock for Midcom than it is for Orlando to move from, from Tully into an Amrod corporate environment. And I, I understand some of those, uh, um, uh, issues or complexities, but uh, I really look forward to the journey. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been an interesting change, but uh, yeah, again, it's, I also look forward to it. We hope to, uh, we hope this black swan corona goes away quickly and uh, we can all get back to as much normality as possible and get the volumes up and move forward. Yeah, I look forward to it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Rob and Orlando, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you can uh, get more live content on www.signafrica.com forward slash live. Thank you so much.